This is BBC One with some familiar faces to take you back in a very special edition of Grandstand with Steve Ryder. Forty years ago, the nation was settling down to an afternoon of racing from Ascot plus golf and show jumping and a result service as well. The idea of Grandstand was born. Forty years on, we're back at Ascot and as for Grandstand, it's still a part of our lives. Not a great deal has changed. October 1958 was another milestone in, uh, in television sports history because it, we had the beginning of Grandstand. He was a very creative chap, Paul. He then said, um, I think that we should also do a program on Saturday afternoons and probably call it Grandstand. And I'm afraid I said, well, I don't think much of that as a title. Can't we think of a better one than that? And here we are, um, 40 or 50 years later, the title's still going and the program's still going. <laughs> you've just joined us, may I just uh, remind you that at four o'clock this afternoon we're going live to Hanover to see the whole of the match uh, between England and West Germany. It's golf again. The players are going out for the fourth and final round in the Open Golf Championship. Whenever those bigger headlines happen during the games, we'll be flashing them up to you with, of course, the results at about 20 to 5 on the teleprinter as they come in. So it was Watford 8, Sunderland 0. In my ear, they're just sorting out the captions to give the scores. They've been moving it out so quickly they can't keep up. It's Watford 8, Sunderland 0, final score. Hello, the first very good reason for watching this program today is, well, the shops this afternoon will be like Bedlam. And that's just one of a hundred good reasons for spending your Saturday afternoons with us. And to further echo the words of David Coleman, Frank Boff, Desmond Lynham and many others, good afternoon and welcome to Grandstand. The longest running programme in televised sport is 40 years old today. We've got Racing from Ascot just as the first programme in 1958. And we're also having a bit of a do with lots of old friends here to help us celebrate. I'll be here doing the hard work. Sue Barker is doing the socialising. Dinner. Sorry, Devin, I've got to go to work now. Sorry about that. But anyway, don't worry, Steve, I'll save you a drink for 5.15. But what a great room to socialise in, because around me here, so many familiar faces that played such an important part on Grandstand over the past 40 years, alongside many of those who made it work behind the scenes. And throughout the afternoon, we'll be talking to many of them to reminisce about uh, the good moments, maybe the uh, not-so-good. But I'm off in search of my first victim, so, uh, Steve, it's back to you. And it's a particular pleasure to welcome Peter Dimmock, presenter of that very first edition of Grandstand back in 1958. Hard to imagine, Peter, but pre-1958, before Grandstand, what were Saturday afternoons like? Well, I mean, we had always had live outside broadcasts, and they were a feature of Saturday afternoon. But, um, well, I was really a bit of a fraud on the programme because, uh, although I was head of outside broadcasts, Paul Fox, who I'm sad he can't be here today in Australia, because really he deserves the credit, together with Brian Cowgill, David Coleman and uh, good old Ronnie Noble because they were the team behind Sports View and Paul had this idea that it would be a good idea to link the live outside broadcasts from a studio so that we could give half-time football results, racing results from other things and various items throughout the afternoon. And then of course the most important thing of all, the football results on the teleprinter with everybody at home with their pools coupon seeing the result the moment it came up. So it was much a, a framework as a programme idea. Did you really get any sense that this was going to be the way forward for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years? 
Well, I think, as you heard a little earlier, uh, I thought the grandstand was quite a good working title, <laughs> but that we Still probably is. changed it. But uh, <laughs> how wrong can you be? Um, no, I think um, that it was very obvious that uh, once we got it off the ground, and uh, David joined it, that it was going to be there for a long time. I couldn't imagine then it would be 40 years, but it certainly did establish itself, and I think was gave a, a very good competition against ITV when ITV started. That very first program, pretty decent lineup, racing from Ascot, as I say, and, and golf from St Andrews as well, show jumping also. How did the program go? Well, it went quite well. Of course, we, 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 but nothing ever goes right the first time. I think that's another reason why Paul, oh flattery, has asked me to introduce it, because I thought, well, if it goes wrong, Dimmock will have to carry the can. But uh, no, the only real thing that happened was I said, and now we leave Ascot to go up to the World Amateur Golf Championships in, at St Andrews, and up came Haringey show jumping. But uh, we got but, over that. And but it has happened a couple of worked. times since as well, I have to tell you, Peter. <laughs> Looking at the development of the programme, what sort of personal pride do you take when you sit back now and watch Grandstand still on the air, still flourishing 40 years on? Yes, well, I think, the, I, I mean, I, well, it's, it's, I, it's an awful admission, but eventually I was forced to get Sky because I used to watch, like watching things like the Ryder Cup because I felt the major sporting events like, you know, the major drama and the major light entertainment were part of the BBC. And therefore, rather like David, I think I, I, I have a slight, slight sense of regret that the BBC couldn't have been King Canute a little longer to keep some of the major events. But, but the, the core of the program is there. The presenters, say in your modesty, the presenters are still first class. I think they've all carried on from David's original tradition. And uh, I find very little to fault except the lack of some big events. With those words, I think you've earned yourself a very decent lunch and there are some good friends next door. So enjoy the rest of the day with us.